Good morning and welcome to my YouTube channel. So this morning I'm heading up to the Trossachs and the Loch Acre area. It's really overcast this morning. Uh, we had the remnants of Storm Franklin and we had a beautiful day yesterday. But this morning it's all overcast. So like they say, when it's overcast, that's the day for photographing waterfalls. I'm not so sure I'll find a waterfall, but what I'll do is we'll head up to Loch Acre and let's see if we can make the best of this weather. So join me this morning and let's see where the journey takes us. Alright, so I've just stopped along the path because I've got Ben Venue straight in front of me and I just thought it looked like quite a nice composition actually because even though we've got no light this morning it could be quite moody with all the clouds so I'm not giving up I'm just, I'll keep um, taking shots and you never know the the clouds in the sky might come up really well and it might add quite a nice uh, atmospheric effect to the images. So what I'll do now is I'll just flip the camera over into portrait mode and then what I'll do is I'll use the path as the leading line and I don't need to change, well I will actually need to change my focal distance because I've just zoomed in. So let me just check the focal distance, take my shot and there we have it. So hopefully that turns out quite nice. I'll wrap up and then we'll keep walking. So as I'm walking along, um, it's different now. You remember different locations by different seasons. Because in the summer, this is absolutely stunning, other than the midges. But the foliage is in full bloom and nice vibrant greens and the heathers are strong. But to be fair, I'm quite happy with this this morning, especially because there's no midges, so it's fantastic. So I do know that I'll eventually get to a clearing. And the clearing will have um, wooden walk boards. So when I get there, I'll turn the camera back on and uh, let's see if there's any images down there. All right, so I found the walk boards. Um, so the good thing is it's a really nice steep walk down. I suppose for going back, I've got a steep climb up, but hey ho. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the walkway, the walkway goes in an S curve. And I'm putting, for this composition, I've got the walkway in the center of the image, but I'm looking straight on to Ben Venue. So I've got fourth of a second F11 ISO 100. I'll take that shot, I'm just going to do a little bracket exposure, just three shots, um, just because I haven't got any filters on for the sky. But I'll do that later on. Uh, it's just that there's a little spit of rain in the air at the moment. And now what I'll do is I'll try, before I turn the camera over to portrait, right, so now what I'm going to do is turn the camera around to the right so that I've got the path in the left hand side of the image. I've got Ben Venue in the left and then there's a rock here in front of me. So what I'll just, oh, <laughs> nearly formatted the card there. Um, 
I'm just going to set three exposures and then I'll get the sky and I'll get the highlights and the, high, the bright exposure for the rock only if I need them because I may not need them um, I'm just going to check those images yeah they're fine so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip the camera over to portrait mode and I'm going to zoom in further to the tip of the mountain and I've got the walk board on the bottom of my screen touching the left and the right hand side so I'm just going to double check my focus only because I've changed the focal distance there crikey right I'm just going to do a quick exposure compensation the reason I said crikey I could have swear I could see a man's face in the side of the mountain so what I'll do is if if it does look like a man's face I'll show you that I'll crop it up and I'll show you that image now so I'm not sure if you agreed if that looked like a man's face but for this angle you never know right that's me finished here let's move on what I'll do is I'll carry the camera around to get to the S-curve and just see if there's any more compositions. Well, as I've been just walking around the corner, I've spotted this tree and what I've done is I've moved round just a bit so there's separation between the two trees here because it's actually it's actually really nice so I'm just going to focus in a bit I'm just change my composition a wee tad actually I'm going to focus in on the tree itself because the colour of the bark is really really nice so let me get that focused right so I've got that shot so what I'll do now is I'll just change it over and a portrait mode I don't need to adjust my focus because I've already got the same focal distance I'll just do a quick exposure compensation and there we have it All right, as I've been walking up along the river um, this river's called the Acre Water and because the river's so swollen, it's covered all the trees at the side of the river. It's really, really high. But there's a waterfall, which is normally a really small waterfall, over here. And it's absolutely raging with water. So what I've done is I've put my polarizer on. Because what I want to try and do is get the waterfall and Ben Venue in the same composition. So I'm going to take some landscape shots and then I'll flip the camera over and I'll get some vertical portrait shots and then what I might do is get a wee bit lower and try and get closer to the edge and see if we can get a shot through the trees that are submerged in the river and maybe, maybe put the, the longer lens on and see if we can get a different composition. So that's the plan. So let's see if that works. So first of all, I'm just setting up the camera. So I've got Ben Venue, oops, Ben Venue in the top right hand side. I've got the waterfall in the middle and I've got all the trees that I'm above lining the way up towards the waterfall so I've got a fifth of a second because I want to slow the water down a little drop I don't want to make it uh, too slow because I want some definition in the water up at the falls and that's actually really really nice so I've adjusted the polarizer so the polarizers on the bottom of the water only because 
it stops the glare coming from the clouds. And I've just done a three image compos exposure compensation there just to check it out. Right, so what I'll do just now is I'll zoom in to the image. I'll change the composition just a bit. So I've got the waterfall coming in on the left hand side and I've got some of the submerged trees in the centre. I'm just going to adjust my focus there. I'll take that shot. I'm just using exactly the same settings. Half a second, F8, ISO 100. Oh wow, this is cool. I never expected this. Never expected this at all. So, it actually, it does pay to come out in any weather because you never know what you're going to see. Right, so what I'll do is I'm going to turn that camera off and I'm going to work my way down as close to the edge as I safely can and then we'll see what different compositions we can get from down there. Alright, so, I'm at the edge, um, I'm just going to zoom out a wee bit because I want to try and get as much water into the foreground as possible while I've got the peak of Ben Venue. So, right, so just straighten the camera up, level it off. There. All right, just adjust the polarizer so I know my water's dark. Right, adjust my focus. So I'm going to focus in to the center of the image and I'm focusing in to the trees that are just in front of the waterfall. There. So I'll use the settings I had before, half a second F8, ISO 100. I'm just going to check that image, I'm just going to see what it looks like. The key thing for me, oh wow, right, so the key thing I'm trying to capture when I take waterfalls is, because I'm using a slow shutter speed, it makes the water milky. But what I'm trying not to do is over compensate my long exposures for the waterfall because then it'll just be a mass of white mist and milk and it'll look horrible. So what I'm trying to do is not freeze it but get enough that I've got streaks in the water. So at half a second I've got that and it, well at half a second it looks quite nice on the back of the screen. <laughs> Hopefully when we get back we put it on the computer. It looks just as good. Ah, that's nice. And there's no highlights. So I was looking on the whites and the water for any highlight um, alerts and there aren't any. So that's nice. So the exposure's good. Um, right, I think I'm kind of finished here and I'll keep walking along and we'll see if there's any more that we can take. Well, do you know, I was walking down the road here and it's funny sometimes you just, something just catches your eye and this tree right in front of me, this tree is framing the waterfall so it won't be to everyone's taste but it's caught my eye, I like it. So I'm going to take the shot, um, I'm just going to zoom in, now I need to look for a rock at the side of the river because I can't zoom in on the moving water because it doesn't quite work. 
Right, so I've got a quarter of a second F8 ISO 200 because it's quite dark and I do want to try and lift some of the textures in the tree because I've got a nice archway for the tree framing the rapid. Okay, so I've moved just a wee bit further to the right and I'm getting more and more intensity of the water. So I've just adjusted my polarizer so that the, the bottom right hand side of the water is really dark and it's going dark to light. And I've had to increase and speed up my shutter speed because there's so much water, everything was getting washed out. So I'm now up to an eighth of a second, F8. And I've had to increase my ISO to 400 because I've increased my shutter speed. <laughs> oh well, do you know, I'm glad I called my channel I Wonder because I, I know I head to a location and I know I wonder to get there but I've just passed this view and it's absolutely stunning so I've got all these reeds sticking out or long grasses the woodland on the far side is all flooded. The composition that I'm using just now is there's white foam in the water. So with the polarizer, I've set the polarizer up so that I can see through the water. I've then got the grasses or the reeds. And then I'm just going to use a four second, a fourth of a second shutter speed just to smoothen out the water in the background. And we'll see how that looks. And then what I'll do then is, I'll widen the composition and we'll get the forest that's flooded in the background as part of the composition. Um, I'm trying to avoid the sky being in the composition if I possibly can. But I'll try that and we'll see how we get on. So I've switched to the long lens and I'm about to take a shot of the branch that's got the water flowing over it and see if that makes a nice image. And then what I'm going to do now is just zoom in to the forest area that's flooded just to see if I can get some areas of interest. I'm trying to focus in, in one area because the, the peak, the tops of the grasses are actually getting in the way of my image. So I'm just going to zoom in and I'm going to zoom in to the, the bark of the tree in front of me. I'll take that shot, I've got a quarter of a second F8 ISO 200 and actually that shutter speed for the water is actually really really nice. So I'm just down at this level to see what I can see. There's some nice mosses on the tree over on my right hand side. I have no idea if that will make a nice image or not. Um, but what I'm trying to do is I'm going to lift the camera up a bit because I want to try and get some of the grasses in the background further in the image. And we'll see how that looks. So I'll share these images with you now. Thank you. 
Well, we're just walking up to the bridge now. I'm just hoping that the volume of water that we've passed in the river isn't too much. But we'll soon find out. Oh, it's raging. Oh, wow. Right. So, this is going to be really tricky. Alright, so I've zoomed in. I'll take my shot and uh, let's see how that turns out. Yep. So, it's, do you know, it's funny because from a photography point of view, waterfalls are nice when there's just the right amount of water in them. When there's far too much like this, it's really difficult. So what I'll do is I'll just move further down and I'll see there's a tree in front of me. So there's a, I'm getting those branches. What I'll do is I'm going to focus in, I'll zoom in on as far as I can and there's a little tree at the top of the falls and then there's a little tree that's submerged in the falls so I'm just going to adjust my camera, I'll change my focus so I'm in focusing in on the tree at the top of the falls because for this angle it acts as quite a nice silhouette and do you know that's actually really nice. And then what I'll do is I'll move up and I'll take a shot of the, that other element, the side of the river coming down this way because it splits in two as it comes round. And I'll see if there's a composition there, a wider composition that has the river coming down in this side and a smaller river coming in this side and see if I can bring the two together. Right, so I'm going to set up this composition where I can try to see if I've got both. So the danger I have here is the wider I go, I get this in focus. So if I position my legs in such a way that the the wood, the wooden spars are supporting my tripod. I just want to see how far down I can go, right? I can only go as low as that rock. Right, that's fine. We'll make do with what we've got. I'm going to zoom in. I'll focus in on the other side of the falls. So I've got the trees in focus. I'm keeping an eighth of a second F8. And I've got a wee tiny highlight. So if I drop my ISO to 100, I'll take that shot. Yep, that's really nice. I'm just going to just adjust the polarizer because I want the water at the edges to be really dark. So I'll take that shot. Right, so I'm going to do a panoramic here as well. And what I'll do is I'll do two shots. I'll do a shot from this position. I'll tilt the camera up. I'll probably take three shots and then I'll stitch them together and then what I'll do is I'll share that image with you just now what I'll do now is I'll move further away and I'll see if there's a composition here and see if there's a nice image of the water coming down the, only, the problem I've got is I just can't get over the bridge now, there's a little ledge under the bridge so what I might do is once I've taken a shot here if that wee ledge is safe I'll try and get down to that ledge and get a wider panoramic view of the falls. Under the bridge. 
and I can get a view here of the falls so I can see this is going to be tricky already um, I'm going to have to drop my ISO to 100 I'm just going to check my focus because I've got this little tree right in front of me and it keeps moving so because I'm using a slower shutter speed we might get some movement in that tree um, I'm just tweaking up my eyes all steadily until I get exposure highlight warnings so I haven't had any yet so that's me at 160 so if I go up to 200 um, right a one wee so if I go back to 160 and if I do three exposure compensations this is pretty fearsome at this level I'm used to standing down by that tree um, it's never, I've never seen it as high and in full spate as this right so I'm going to zoom up to the top as much as I can just to try and get those trees in focus right so if I zoom into the tree take my shot that's nice I was just thinking is there any other could I get closer and closer to the water but nah let's what we'll do is we'll go back and uh, I'll walk along the road because I've never walked this far along that road before so we'll walk along the road I know there's a dam up there uh, but yeah Let's not take any risks. Right, well, I think what we'll do is we'll just head up again, go back up to the road, and then we'll see what uh, images, if anything, we can get. So I'll just turn around you can get that panoramic view I mean it's a stunning beautiful area but when the water's that high and I'm on my own I'm not really going to take a risk so let's walk up the path back to the road and see what we can find well I've got a wee poly bag to sit on to keep me dry I've just walked to the top of the hill where the road kind of peaks I will walk along a wee bit later on just to see uh, what's along with there but the river looks starting to look pretty far away and pretty flat so it's not as interesting as it is further down so I've been out for about four and a half hours and I haven't even had a drink so I'm going to sit and have this coffee and I have a new bar it's Canadian maple syrup, so that might be quite nice and uh, I'll enjoy it This area is pretty cool. This is the Trossachs in central Scotland and I'm near Loch Catrin, but I'm actually the other side of Loch Catrin and there's a dam at Loch Catrin that no one sees because everybody's um, always directed to the visitor centre but the water that comes down from Loch Catrin that flows down into Loch Acre is called the Acre Water and that's what we've been taking photographs of this morning and the other thing about this area is it's such a beautiful area there's a masses of history in this area with Rob Roy McGregor, Sir Walter Scott it's just amazing we've got some amazing hills we've got Ben Ann and then we've got Ben Venue behind me and then if we walk further up, you'll then start to get closer towards Ben Lomond, the Arica Alps. It's just absolutely stunning. Um, and I've been lucky so far because it hasn't rained. So that's been a real wee bonus. So what I'll do is, I'll just go and sit, 
have my coffee and have my breakfast bar. If this happens to be the end of the video, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do because you know it's free. And if you press the bell notification, that'll let you know the next time I post a video. So thank you for watching and here's to the next video.